Okay, so that's even still. Six to four in the closing 15 seconds. Oh my two god, points. he scores oh two. My god. It's, it's tied. tied. It's tied, but Bouchard no just mounted. Wow. That's got to be an advantage. Oh my gosh. Oh, he scored an advantage. That was the best two comeback uh, ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> god. <laughs> Bouchesha oh, delivers wow. again this weekend. <laughs> that was like 9.59 when it happened. Goes crazy. Kavaka going to end up in hospital soon, man. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Double gold for Bouchesha at the 2012 oh Worlds. Oh my God. <laughs> he can't believe in himself. Holy, how many matches did we have decided in the last 10 Too seconds? Too many. I can't take it. <laughs> oh my God. That was impressive. That was impressive. Wow. What a great shot. Wow. That is an awesome shot. Oh my God. Bushesha did everything in this competition. That is amazing, man. What a weekend. <laughs> Fucking amazing. What are they saying, Braulio? They're just calling Checkmat. Who is Checkmat? Oh my god. Man, Bishesha, I get so pumped up just watching you win the 2012 World Championships. <laughs> How did that time. feel? Man, it was like a great feeling because it was my first title as black belt. My first two titles was like in the same tournament. So for me, I, f I felt great, you know, because it was like, like a different because in 2011, I lost in the open class for Rodolfo. Mm -hmm. I, I got caught in an arm bar and I lost the finals like a referee decision for Leonardo Nogueira. Mm -hmm. Then one year later, I could beat these two guys, you know, so it was like a real satisfaction for me, you know, right. like for myself. How confident were you going into that tournament? Were you sure you were going to win? I'm, I always, when I go to a tournament, you know, my, 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 my thoughts are the best because if I'm fighting, because I'm ready, you know, because I'm training for, so I train it a lot. I, I did serious the, the train, the, the, all the training, you know, the conditioning. So if I'm fighting, you guys can like bet that I'm, I'm ready, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like feeling like 100%, no injuries, no nothing, like feeling good, confident. Then I was like, if I don't, I, I think if I'm not winning, I'm gonna do like good, you know, but if I do good, I think I can win, you know, so yeah. that's what my, was my, my thoughts. I have so many questions for you, some more about the 2012 Worlds, but also about Metamorris. But let's go back to the beginning. Tell me about your early days in training. Did you train with Kavaka your whole time? Yeah, yeah. I started training with Kavaka, you know, but actually who first started was my sister. Then my father went to follow her, you know, he started training too. Then everybody at home just was doing jiu-jitsu, you know. <laughs> then I said, man, I should start too, you know. Then I started going with my father, but I was like too young. He carried me like, you know, every time. But after I started doing, uh, I, I stopped to, to train like for one year. I started like surfing and you know, doing some different stuff, but I, I, I miss the mat, you know. Then when I, like, back to train, I remember the day, like, in 2005, I was 15 years old. 
since that day to nowadays i train every single day like for like serious you know so that's why i'm here like today do your sister and father still train my father is black belt he got the black belt with me in the same day oh, really? uh, yeah actually like yeah it was the same day and my sister she she stopped to train mm -hmm. you know? mm. but my father is still training hard in sense you know when most people think about Checkmat, I think they think about the Vieira brothers. Not a lot of people think about Kavaka, but he's well known in his own right and a world champion. Tell me a little bit about Kavaka. Yeah, Kavaka, he's my master, you know. He, in 2006, he got his black belt under Elcio Figueiredo. Um, black belt, Elcio is a black belt under Carson, I'm, I'm not sure. But since 2006, he's been like good. Then, but he's uh, also like has a school, Integração Jiu Jitsu, but he's kind of like just regional, you know, just in, in the tall, like in tall, like Santo City, you know. Then he, he was looking for something bigger, then he left Integração and went to train with Leo because everybody knew like Leo before. And he went to train with Leo in Sao Paulo, like one hour away, like from Santos. Then he started training like three times a week, four times a week, he, he, uh, he was like, he drove to Sao Paulo all the way, like back and forth to train with Leo. Then he opened his, his own school in Santos. Then a lot of guys, all the competitors follow Cavaca, you know, and started from from the bottom, but today he is like is the biggest one of the biggest like schools in the São Paulo state, and he's doing good as like teacher, master, and great you know great influence for for everybody who is starting and everybody who is like black belt or you know so that's why he's doing a lot of champions, not just me, but he does like a lot of good guys, you know. Mm -hmm. I know you like leg attacks, and I've seen Kavaka go after foot attacks also. Is that s something that you got from him? I actually, a little bit, you know, but because Kavaka likes more foot locks, but I don't have like that, that, that like him, you know, because he, he does, man, my foot is bad because of him, you know. <laughs> but, I because I have I'm very flexible so I can't I can't do like upside down guard you know then my I I love half guard I love to play half guard then like kind of fit my game I start to train I start like reaching that positions in the beginning I was like I remember I was purple when I started doing the the things but I couldn't attack as purple then as as brown I started doing more more and more and nowadays like I have like a good game you know like kind of I have like all this the positions on my head you know like so it's, that's why I'm do like I'm doing everything good because I'm not think that I'm good because I know the positions but I think what make me like different because my transition my transitions are really fast you know I, I can think really fast so that's why I think like I'm doing good you know mm -hmm. when I think about big guys that move like lightweights I think about you and cyborg why do you think you guys have that in common yeah our game is like look like a lot but I don't know, but it looks similar. He loves play tornado 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 guard. Uh, I like to. I almost had like hard in the tornado tornado sweep. He called me, man, you almost got him. But I said, yeah, I try, but man, it's not easy. Yes, 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 girl, I saw. But I don't know. It's just he's really flexible. He's way flexible than me. So I think that's why I make like us our game different because we can move. We kind of surprise a lot the guys. Mm -hmm. Now I, I understand because he always love to fight against like big guys because they are like slower than us, you know. So I think it's, it's good, you know, to fight against somebody bigger than than do you, me. Do you feel the same way? Would you rather compete in the absolute division than your weight class? Yeah, like when I fought, when I fight open class, I. I'm kind of the biggest one, you know, so I don't fight with the guys like bigger than me. Sometimes, really sometimes. But in my division, I'm kind of the smallest, you mm -hmm. know, so 
in the open class, I fought more like with light guys, middle guys, you know, like have, but not like heavy, heavier than me, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the 2012 Worlds. You took on Rodolfo Vieira, and that match is one of our most popular videos with over 700,000 views on YouTube. I think most people thought that you were going to lose that match because you lost the year prior. What were you thinking when you start, when you walked into that match? Ah, like, I, when I went to the tournament, I wasn't thinking, like, about spe specific somebody, you know. If I, if I for I win the the whole thing. I gotta beat every single one. Mm -hmm. So I was ready because I knew that I'm supposed to fight against him. Why? Because if he like beat everybody on this side and I beat everybody on, on my side, he said we we face each other like uh, sooner or later. So I was ready. You know, I was ready for everybody. So when he came like on the quarterfinals, like. I was kind of fresh because I, the first match I submitted like in 20 seconds and the second match I submitted uh, was against Tucson, like a really tough guy and I, uh, I submitted him like uh, with a triangle. So I was like really fresh, I wasn't tired. Then I said uh, it's going to be 10 minutes, like I'm trying to submit. Then I did a lot of mistakes on the match, but he did too, you know. So. Uh, but was a good match. I, I think I surprised a lot of people because everybody, like you said, was thinking, "Oh, Rodolfo gonna beat him one more time." I, I, I saw the internet. Sometimes the guys said, "Put, eh, Rodolfo beat these guys like ten times." Mm -hmm. But man, we fought just one. You know how right. he beat me ten. But it was good. You know, we fought two times, one for each side. So it's good. Soon we're gonna have like one more fight for sure. And mm -hmm. but. Everything like just on the mat, you know. Right. After everybody like celebrate together, so. so no hard feelings between you no, two. No, no. Right. Someone from the chat room asked, "Who is someone in jiu-jitsu that you look up to other than your master Kalvaka?" I like to uh, watch a lot of guys, you know. I like <clears throat> to watch Roger fighting, mm -hmm. you know, Rodolfo, Andrea Galvão. So I like to watch these guys a lot you know like the i hate watch fights that when i go in youtube and i see like 10 minutes fight i hate because <laughs> i know that no submission you know so when i see like three minutes or at least like six minutes I said yeah somebody submit somebody you know so <laughs> let's watch so that's why uh, these guys fight for submit. So when the guys try to get a good position, like stalling, we've got the sweep or got something and wait until like 9.59 to sweep, I hate this, this, this thing, you know? So that's why like these guys, like, like I just said, they fight forward, you know? They fight like me, we, like, we fight to submit, so. A lot of times I forget the, the, the clock, I forget the, the points, and it goes to be mid. So that's why I think a lot of people like my game, you know. So. If you're winning a match and you're in a dominant position and there's only a minute left, will you go for a submission? For sure. I think that's why you guys can see, like, that's why Rodolfo caught me. Like, I was... I got caught in the arm bar because it was one minute left, everybody stay, stop. No, and I tried to pass and he tried to sweep me. I said, if he sweep, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Then for don't give up the two points, I gave my arm, you know. It was a risk, but was everything all right? You know? but, I think most coaches would say that that is a strategic mistake. You should just hold the position and win. What would Kavaka say about that? You know, he was the, everybody was saying like to hold the position, but every time I fought a lot, I've, I've, been, I've been fighting like Jiu Jitsu since like 2005. So every time when the guys say, hey, do the strategy, you know, do this, do this, do that, don't fight, try hold, try stall, always I'm like, I mess up, you know, like something goes wrong. And, but when the guys say, yeah, do whatever you like, do your game then I do good but if they stay don't move stay something goes wrong you know I, so you don't want a coach to tell you what to do strategically no no uh, it's very very important you know like a coach like Avaka is really always is very important here on my side same tell, telling me what to do 
but some some something that he see is not good for me and something that I think is good for me he sees that is not good you know but he he knows that when he says stay I don't I'm never gonna stay you know? <laughs> so it's not gonna work but he knows that so that was funny because the last time like one week ago he said yeah we should your game you don't have strategy but pay attention you know for don't don't stay in bad position say all right you know, but he knows like so he doesn't even try to tell you to stay anymore he just like <laughs> yeah he's not like stop he he, he got tired you know <laughs> to, to try <laughs> Still got a lot of questions for you about Metamorphs, but first I want to talk to you about uh, where you're teaching. You're teaching very close to where I live at uh, Ace Jiu Jitsu. How long have you been teaching there? Yeah, I've been teach I've been uh, I've been te teaching at Ace since the beginning of the year. You know, uh, Ace Jiu Jitsu in Funny Valley, so it's pretty close over here. I'll, a lot of people ask me where I teach, so. Now you guys know, right? Mm -hmm. And I have other location in Corona. So, so you're going back and forth to both schools? Yeah, Corona uh, Ultimate Training Center. It's right with the 91 with the 15. Mm -hmm. right there, you know. There. So I have two. I teach in two different locations in, here in California. And is that going to be uh, where you're going to be teaching for the next foreseeable future? Yeah, yeah, because I didn't open my own my own gym, you know, so my own school. But if you guys want to train with me, so if you want to, like, row at least visit, like, you guys can go there in the, the locations I'll be teaching, like, the whole week, you know, so just find the schedule. Yeah. Nice. I don't know the guys in Corona, but I know that your uh, your teammates at Ace Jiu Jitsu are great guys. Tim Cartmel and Asa Fuller. Yeah, yeah, they they are really great. You know, I just start when I when I start to to teach there. They everybody like we seem like very good. You know, they just treat me like family there. So mm -hmm. it's a very because it's a very good like environment the gym because it's not like everybody like you know wanna be a fighter. So it's a lot of family guys. So it's really good, you know, everybody like treat like like a family, you know, like really like look like really look like Brazil. Mm -hmm. That everybody on the gym like after the train everybody nobody like go home, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody stay chilling on the man, talking each other. So that's that's it's very good to see here. I don't see that much here, you know. Mm -hmm. Guys, don't go anywhere. We're gonna be right back with Bushesha where we're gonna talk about metamorphs. Budovideos.com, home of the world's largest selection of quality jujitsu kimonos. Show your roll, Storm, Tatami, Bull Terrier, Venom, and others. Styles from more than 30 top brands in stock and ready to ship. Budovideos.com, you're only a click away from owning a new gi today. Welcome back. We're here with Bushesha. Bushesha, I want to talk about your performance at Metamorphs, but before we talk about that, I want to get your opinion on Andre Galvao versus Huron Gracie. There's a lot of opinions on both sides. What did you think about their match? I think it was, was a good match, you know, but it's hard to say. Like, I don't think like jiu-jitsu have different jiu-jitsu, like professional jiu-jitsu and like jiu-jitsu self-defense. Jiu-Jitsu, the goal of the Jiu-Jitsu is finish the fight. But if you can't finish the fight, have like some some questions, like who did like something bad, or you know that's why you have the points. So I think it was a great match. Here on Gracie and Andre Galvão, they are like very very good athletes, you know. But I heard like Hiron said that oh. If the the medal of the IBJF for me is a piece of paper, you know, so I think it's not like that because everybody, I think he should like kind of respect more, you know, because everybody like fought the tournaments. He fought a lot of tournaments, you know, so, but he's a great competitor, but was like, I think in my opinion, like Andrea was like was best in the fight because he tried more you know he and he don't was more just fighting for you know like for the def, more defending the 
and Andre, you know, and Andre was more offensive. He was really trying to submit, but he couldn't. But that's good for Nihiro because he has a good, really good defense, you know. But it was a good match. You know, both guys did like great. All of the other uh, competitors in the tournament were active competitors with a great track record. Huron is not an active competitor. Do you think Huron deserved to be in that tournament? Uh, I think he try, he, they they try to put like a lot of Grace family, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they they choose the fight. So I'm nobody to say like if he deserves more than somebody else, you know. But I think. If he was there, I think because for some reason he deserved it, you know. If you were facing here on Gracie, what would you do? What would your strategy be any different than Andre's? No, I would try to submit, mm -hmm. like, you know, because that was the idea of the tournament, you know. So I would try, but I would try like more things than like different things, like surprise him, you know. So I think would be like some a little bit different but with the same goal to try to finish the fight right a lot of people were saying well it's easy when you when you don't attack it's easy just to defend but we're talking about a multiple time world champion against you know Andre Galvao do you think it's easy to defend for 20 minutes against somebody of Andre's caliber no i think it's hard so he 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 did good it's as if if like fight to don't tap you know but you gotta you gotta like know the technique to defend it's yeah. not just close your arms like and nobody can because if you protect your neck you give your arm you give your leg you give your foot so you have a lot of options but he was like on the right time in defending good so good for him you know but i think it would be like if he, both guys was trying to submit each other, I think it would be like a better fight. You know? Yeah, be more interesting for the viewers, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's get to your match. You had an excellent match with Roger Gracie. It started off with your trademark double leg takedown. Is that your favorite takedown? Yeah, like I train a lot. You know, I don't train too much judo because these guys are way better than me, like judo. But I'm, like you said, I'm big. I'm like taller. Like bigger than the guys, but I'm f really fast. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm surprising a lot of the guys with my wrestling, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm training a lot, but like no gi, you know, like wrestling. But I can't put because I like I like to fight like like that, you know. Like I don't like to hold and stay. You guys see, like I try one thing down, two don't work, break the grips and start again. You know, try other thing. So I try like. I try a lot of different things, but I think my my double I take down is is one thing that I train a lot on the wrestling. You know, like a lot of guys help me. The guys like Dana Point, uh, wrestling team. You know, Juan Cis, Lucas Leite. They are great standing, so they help me a lot with the. They teach me, you know. So yeah, you've had a lot of luck with your double legs against Roger and, and twice against Rodolfo. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Actually. One against Odo. Oh, just one? Okay. Against uh, Leonardo with the 15 seconds left. Right. That's so, right. That's what I was thinking. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Against Leo Leite, like Olympic judo guy, so mm -hmm. I, I could took him down. When you when you fired off that double leg against Adolfo and even Hodger, is it do you just see it and you just and you go for it, or is, do you spend a lot of time setting it up? Mm, no, like. Like I said, I can't see like the transition transitions like really fast. So with Roger, he he plays more judo, so he stay like more posture. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I could like reach one time. But you guys can see on the match like when I took him down, he kind of no points, right? So I felt he kind of like accepting the take down for end up in the close guard. Mm -hmm. But I knew that because we was training, like think about the rules. So when I took him down, I kind of before he touched the mat, I jumped to the side, so I couldn't like get end up on the close mm -hmm. guard because nobody wanna be on the his close guard, you know. <laughs> so when I end up kind of in the half guard, so I couldn't like put my game on, so it was better. That was my strategy on the double leg, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the tornado sweep for a moment. That wow. was one of the most exciting moments you had, Roger. Completely elevated. It was so close. What could you have done to finish that? Man, like I, I do, I do really good that sweep, and 
Roger was even like he the one thing like Roger when he makes a grip is he go forward you know he don't change too much so he got his grips and I couldn't like let him like upside down really like 90 degrees but he leaned his head on the mat and like I think he's too tall you know yeah. so he has a lot of bases so I think that's why if I think it was somebody like shorter mm -hmm. I would like sweep but he's too tall and of course not, not just of that he's like he's the only one 10 times world champ so right. he, he has like a great defense he has like a great technique to be, after that he got me like he passed my guard because he was waiting for the right moment and then when I kind of stopped to try boom he passed my guard mm -hmm. maybe about five minutes toward the end of the match Roger was looking really tired he was hunched over did you feel like the pace was changing and it, now it was your time actually it's different because it's not like just a, a jiu-jitsu tournament you know it's different because all eyes on you you know so but we are fighting then when right in the beginning he turned on the on his knees then i was on his back i felt like he's breathing like really hard but i was too you know so because i it's different when you fight like that everybody like it's kind of different feeling so I, I he was tired but i was tired too it's not just because i was ready but kind of too much adrenaline you know so and i was tired but I could fight more if I need, you know. Mm -hmm. But, and you're not fighting against anyone. You, can, you I was fighting against Roger, so, you know, right. I think a lot of things was going on in my head, you know. Well, the last minute of the match, as usual, you made it super exciting. Right. You jumped on that arm lock. Everybody was shocked. The volume of the stadium just increased mm. tenfold. And you had his arm completely extended. What was going through your mind at that point? Yeah, when... I did one the move like a lot of guys think yeah no it was luck no like I train a lot of these things and I did I do fast so I think that's why I surprised the guy in the beginning of the fight I got his back then you guys know like I have like a good uh, back attack I assume he met a lot of guys but Roger make me feel uh, made me feel like a white belt on his back because I took his back and he took me off like <laughs> 20 seconds so I said yeah I don't want to like try attack his back why because it's too hard Tereré Marcelo Garcia the, the best guys that submit on the back he took the guys off the back the guys almost had the his neck but almost doesn't count right then the first one i think yeah so back is not a good idea then the second one i think he was waiting for a back attack then i shoot for his arm so i think i surprised him a lot with that with that move mm -hmm. so when i have his arm ex extended like i feel like it's now it's gonna be like now or never like and i try really hard so the guy said yeah you let go no i try really try but he did like a great technique he was the he was like really calm and he was like really thinking about the technique so he started doing the defense i try like pull put to the side so i was pinching my legs sugar was like everything perfect but he did a great technique to escape so it's all all good for him you know so congrats for for his escape because i tried to submit but he really escaped so the match was officially called a draw, but how do you feel about it? Do you feel like you won that match? No, like you said, it was a draw. That was the rules, but we fought, you know. We didn't like, I didn't was like just defensive and he was like neither, you know. So we really fought. I think the jiu-jitsu is not like that. Don't have difference like jiu-jitsu, American, Brazilian. No, jiu-jitsu. The goal is what submit. So he was trying to submit. He, I was trying to submit him. So, so the, I think the idea of the tournament was that match. You know, so back and forward, both guys fighting. You know, to submit each other. So that's the guy. Everybody went there to watch one one fight like that, or the other fights that the guys submit, like you know, Caio, Lovato, you know. Kron, so everybody went to see that jiu-jitsu thing. So I think for me, jiu-jitsu is this, you know, don't have like excuses. Ah, no, I was trying to do it. No, we fought, really fought. 
nobody subbed me, nobody, so it was a draw. But I, I'm really happy with my performance, so um, I did I did great, so I'm doing, I'm, I'm happy with that match results. Absolutely. You've competed in a lot of IBGJF tournaments. How do you think this match will happen if you face Roger in an IBGJF tournament? I don't know. It's hard to say because it's different rules. Yeah. So a lot of times, like during the training, even more like with somebody like try to take me down. Many times I don't like try to hold. I just accept, you know. So, but I would be like training different. But I think it would be like very interesting because for real, like if you guys want to like, if the words were like supposed to be tomorrow, I'm ready because I'm ready to fight like 40 minutes straight. So 10 minutes for me, it's nothing, you know? So I would be ready. And like I fought 20 minutes, was like a really fight 20 minutes. So we got tired, but if I fight 20, I can't fight 10, you know? So. I'm sure you enjoyed the, the cash prize that Meta Morris offered, but let's just talk about the rule set. What would be your perfect rule set to compete under? Guys, for like being honest, I like the rules because that's the idea of the jiu-jitsu, you know. Like sometimes IBJJF is really, you can't, for really every time they change in the rules. So for be honest, I don't know the rules anymore, you know. Yeah. Like sometimes when I get foot lock, so some guys say that you can do something, you can you cannot. So I, I kind of confused, you know, and I, I love like leg attacks, so, you know. But I think some things the guys are are being too much you know like uh, but the metamorphs was good because it was like the jiu-jitsu back in the day you know like a long fight and i think they choose really good the the guys because like i said imagine they put like some guys that love the one position and never submit nobody so it would be like horrible mm -hmm. for me the 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 match was good but Maybe can, he could do like no points and no 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 timing, you know. Mm -hmm. Would be like interesting to see, you know. But I think was I like the rules of this one. Mm -hmm. Say Halle Gracie gives you a call tomorrow and says, Bushesha, we want to invite you to Metamorphs too. Who do you want your opponent to be? I don't like to choose. They they give me a name and I'll be ready for. You know? But Halle is saying, no, you choose your opponent. Anybody you want. I put him on white belt. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No, like, no, I'm joking. Like, yeah, I don't like to choose somebody, you know, but it would be like a pleasure for me fight with like guys that I grow up like watching, like Roger, you know, like was really an honor for me fight against like him. So, you know, like have a a lot of names but I can like say one you know but if the guys say like one good name would be an honor for me but I don't have like one name in mind you know a lot of people say it's easier to become a champion than to defend your championship belt do you feel the same way no I it's, I know what you mean but I don't feel like that pressure you know I just 22 years old the guys are have too much like way more road time than me mm -hmm. you know so i'm just starting i know i i now like i'm on my best moment of my life but i know that that's not the the top that i can i can reach so i know i just starting you know i have way more to reach so i have this in my mind it's amazing. You're only 22 years old and you've already accomplished so much. A lot of people are saying that you're going to be the next Roger Gracie, meaning the next 10-time world champion. Do you think that uh, will be true? That's hard. 10 <laughs> times, but I don't know. But it's really, it's really hard. I'm, I'm not seeing like a point somebody say, yeah, this guy can like win 10 times. No, it's it's hard you know so but i don't know i'll be fighting i don't think like about this i just start i keep fighting if if like supposed to be it will be you know but 
let's see, let's wait for a few years, right? Right. Do you have any future goals? Is it, do, you, do you want to go to MMA or you want to get five world championship titles? Yeah, like I don't, I don't think too much ahead, you know. So my my next goal, my next goal. I want to be like ADCC champion because I never fought ADCC. So, you know, I never had, I'm living here. So it's too hard to travel like to Brazil to like make trial. So I'm waiting for like invitation to the guys. So, but that's my next goal. And of course I want to like share with everybody my technique, everything that I learned, everything that I do with seminars around the around the US and around the world because of this fight I really train really hard so I got to like say no for a lot of seminars so now I'm going to f- just focus on the seminars this year and next year you know right. is there any seminars coming up you want to let the viewers know about um soon I'll, I forgot the the dates and the places but soon I'll be in Ohio New Jersey, San Francisco, New York, uh, Hawaii. Uh, next week I'll be in London, Poland. So it's kind of some some different places. And what do you go over on your seminar? What's a typical Bushesha seminar like? What I really do, you know, I don't show like I, a lot of things that I show like is like good things. I mean like fence you know but I really do and works for me so I teach a lot of half guard bar on top to finish the sweep back back control to to finish the sweep to, to finish to just control and some nice and good moves too you know do you answer is there a Q&A session do you answer questions at the seminars too yeah yeah Every, everything that the guys ask me about like my training about my lifestyle about my thoughts about the the math so I'm not just go there teach a technique and go home you know I go there I really enjoy the time with the guys many times I roll with every single one in the seminar sometimes are like 30 people you know so I tr- of course sometimes I I can't but always when I can when I have time I try to roll with everybody you know like have fun with the guys then go out talk, ab- talk about like Jiu Jitsu you know a lot of things I answer a lot of all his, his questions about my training about my diet about everything that they want to know about me from me well, that sounds like a great time. Seminars are, are usually fairly expensive, but the way you just described it sounds like it'd be a great experience. Oh, yeah, because like I said, you know, the people are, the people are going there not just to, like, see one technique. Because you can open YouTube, you have, like, a lot of... Not because I don't have, like, I have, like, some technique, but when I just moved to the United States, I couldn't, I barely, like, speak English, you know, that was years ago. Now it's a little bit better, but like I said, you know, like the people go there to to enjoy the time, to meet the person. So you know, so the people go there, talk to me. So a lot of times train train with me, ask from me, like ask for me the his questions. So we kind of like have a good time, you know, with us. So. It's not just go there, all right, let's do this, 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 and go home, mm-hmm. you know? So I, that's why I like to do a lot of seminars. You know? Right. If people want to find out more about you online, where can they find you? Yeah, so I'm doing my website, you know, so bucheshabjj.com. And for now, I have my, my Twitter. I post, like, my Twitter and my FM page on Facebook. So Marcos Buchecha both. And my personal Facebook account, so you guys can see. I do like update uh, about my my life, about everything. So you guys can follow me, you know, like have know me a little bit better, you know. And for seminars and info, bushishabjj at hotmail dot com, you know. So I'll be like answering all the answering all the questions that all you guys wanna know about me or seminars and stuff. And what's the next tournament you're uh, planning to do? I really don't know. Like I said, like I was 
I wasn't planning anything when the metamorphs show up. Mm -hmm. So for now, I really don't know. Like I said, I'm focused on seminars. So let's see. Maybe NMs. I don't know. Right. Great. Well, guys, we're going to go to the mat in just a minute. What are you going to show us on the mats today, Bishesha? I, I think a lot of people ask me about the arm bar, so we can go over about this a okay. little bit. Sounds good. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back on the mats with Bushesha. BudoVideos.com, home of the world's largest selection of quality jujitsu kimonos. Show your role, Storm, Tatami, Bull Terrier, Venom, and others. Styles from more than 30 top brands in stock and ready to ship. BudoVideos.com, you're only a click away from owning a new gi today. Now I go, boom, right to the seven. And if you do it right, you shouldn't hurt the guy. And you don't want to drop your knee on their toes. Don't be this dude with those. Boom! <laughs> Break his toe. Don't be that guy. So you can here, right? right? Now the way you hook them is once you get here, this leg comes in here. And push. Could you break down the Roger arm bar that you got at Metamorphs? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. So first of all, like a lot of people ask me like, oh, how did you do that? You know, like I train a lot this kind of move because I think I surprise a lot of people because I are really fast moving, you know. So first I'm gonna do like the real time, then we break down step by step, right? So the first thing let's say when like kind of like wasn't the case, but let's say when I pass the guard and the guy start turning on the knees to, to, for don't give up the points, right? So as soon before the guy turns all the way, I like to hold, okay, kind of his shoulder here, right? So when the guy turns, yeah, it's absolutely right. So let's let's break down and do it step by step. So first thing here, guys, let's say. In that case, it was like a sweep, but he kind of ended up on the third position, right? So let's say here, when I pass like pass his guard, okay, with the X pass or whatever, then the guy start turning on the knees, right? As soon as the guy start turning, he can't turn too much, why? Because he's still holding his lapel, right? So I just let go of the lapel and hold his kind of his 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 shoulder and his biceps, right? Then I let the guy turn, okay. So when he turn all the way, I still have kind of a little bit of control. So a lot of guys think of oh, what? That I'm gonna uh, try put the hooks in, right? Both, they kind of waiting for that, why? Because they close the, the arm, you know? So they kind of try protect the hook. But when you go forward, the, the secret of this position, you can't, you can't be afraid to try to do. You gotta go forward, forget about if it's gonna work or not. So look, when you put your hook in, make sure that you don't gonna try put your hook. Try, try across through his body here and go to the other side, right? So when you put the hook, use your leg to swing the guy over to the other side, right? 
So look, when you enter, make sure that you roll. Try do like a roll forward, right? Then bring him with the leg, right? So come back, please. So that's why you gotta you gotta pass your leg through his bed, right? So then here you're gonna bring him now with your leg, right? As we end up here, so a lot of time here, what happened? The guy hold the hand together, right? So in that match, I could break with my foot, right? So hold together. So what I did there was I put my foot, then break, then I bring his arm down. But I like to do all the thing here. I do, I like I do a lot. Hold together. I like to hold the kimura control here and close, okay, like a triangle. So I, I like to put my heel right here on his wrist, right? Then close a triangle, okay? I'm not crossing my my feet. I'm closing a triangle. Then I do the pressure. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do like a pressure for a wrist lock here. Then or he gonna tap on the wrist lock or he gonna let go. So probably he will let go, then I'm able to finish on the arm bar, right? Many times when the guy try to come up, I cross over and block his shoulder. Then he can't, he can't stay, uh, come all the way up. So uh, that was how I finished Leo late in the final of the words, right? So, but Roger, he escaped. So let's do one more time. <coughs> so now we're real time. Hey, Bishesha, can you stay there for a moment? Well, <coughs> so in, in the match with Roger, your footwork was a little bit different. No, right. yeah, it was kind of like that. But when I like hold, when I break, he tried to escape. Then he started doing the defense for now. When I straight, he was pushing my knee, you know? Yeah, then I could block here, but he passed over. Then I was like that, exactly like that. But he was trying to come up, but I was doing the pressure here on his arm, right? So try come up. Then I was throwing here, he can't because, but he was pushing too much. Then I start doing the pressure to the side. So I kind of, I did kind of two, two different pressures, like the, the regular arm bar. Then I kind of twist his arm and start push to the side here, right? So I was doing like pressure with my hip here, right? So was like really tight, but he was keep fighting and he kind of come up too much. Then here, wasn't that tight. Then I tried to get a triangle, but he was like, like aware about that. Then I just end up in the close guard. Do you think there's anything you could have done to finish that arm bar or is it impossible against Roger? I mean, I did, I did everything that I know, you know, but the guy never tapped before in a right. tournament, so was like, I tried, but he really escaped, right. you know? But I thought that I could be the first one to submit him, but I wasn't. But it was, was a good try. Absolutely, it was a great performance, yeah. and thanks for breaking that down. That was great. Thank you guys, thank you guys very much for the, for the invitation <laughs> here, for the opportunity to show you guys my technique. And if you guys can get more details, you guys know, just, your website one more time? Web type, website some buchechabjj.com, right? My fan page and my Twitter and my Facebook, Bush, uh, Marcos Buchecha. And for more info, seminars and everything, buchechabjj at hotmail.com. Let's break down this and more secrets. Thank you, Bushesha, and thank you guys for tuning in to This Week in BJJ. We're here every week at 4.30 Pacific Time. We'll stay tuned uh, next week for a brand new episode of This Week in BJJ. See you guys next week. Awesome.